So there you are, programming merrily along, getting all sorts of bits and pieces done, and you realize suddenly that your program is three and a half thousand tokens long or something like that. It's, it's absolutely enormous, and you scroll through it and scroll through it and scroll through it, and you realize it's absolutely huge. And you still haven't actually added in a menu system or a high score table or anything like that. And what's happening is your program is just getting far too large. Now, obviously, at the top up here, there are some tabs that you could add extra tabs and put some code in. But at some stage, you have to know what state your game is in. Are you playing the game? Are you in the menu screen? Are you in the high score screen? Have you got a splash screen? All of those sort of bits and pieces. And it becomes very hard to detangle this huge amount of code from the state of the game. Where are you actually within the game? So what we're going to look at in this video is how to control the state of the game. So how we can keep things simple when programming our game so that we know what state we're in and which bit of code is running for that state. Now the way I do this is I set up a table called game. Now in Pico 8 a table can hold all sorts of different variable types. So it can hold integers and it can hold strings and it can hold functions. And this is really important because what we're going to do is we're going to give game two specific functions. And that's an update function and a draw function. And then in our actual game itself, we simply have our usual function update, end that, and our function draw, which we end. And these just run the update function from the game table and the draw function from the game table. Um, being a true programmer, of course, I've um, shortened the word draw to DRW to save valuable seconds of my life and update to UPD so that it matches it and it's three characters long. Um, there is no specific reason for doing that and you could, in fact, be more verbose and have update and draw if you wanted. We also usually would have an initialization function in our table. So we're going to have function in it. And this is where we would set up the main functions and variables if we wanted. So I could just say here, set up the variables. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to show a menu. So I'm going to put show menu, which is a function. Show menu is a function. And in my tab here, I'm going to say this is the menu. So this is the new state we're going to be in. And there's a function here called show menu. Okay, and this is quite important. Here is our show menu function that's called from the init. So the first thing it's going to run is this. And our show menu is going to set up various bits and pieces for the menu. Now, in this instance, I'm just going to say that game update is going to equal, say, menu update. And that's going to be a function I'm going to create. And game.draw is going to equal menu draw. And so I've now got to create these two new functions. So I'm going to say function menu update end and function menu draw. So now what's going to happen is I'm saying that the game update, that is this one here that runs in the update command, is going to run this function, menu update. So this is effectively the update function for the menu state. And this function will run constantly in our game menu. Uh, sorry, in our, in our true game, okay? So in here, I just want a little bit of code. So this is an update. So I'm just gonna say, if btn for then, so if the player is going to press a button, um, I'm going to move on to the next stage of the game. All right. And in the draw, I'm going to clear the screen, as per always. And I'm going to go print. And I'm just going to put something in here. Whoops. So press X to start, something like that. And I'm just going to put it at 10, 10, maybe in red. Or is that white? That's white. Okay, so if I was to then run this, you can see I've just got press X to start. Now if I press X, nothing happens. So I'm gonna copy all of this bit of code here. 
and I'm going to open another tab and I'm going to call this one the game. So I've pasted it in and now I've got show game. That's my function in here and this is going to have game update and game draw. Okay, and in game update, something's going to happen. We'll worry about that in a second. And in game draw, it's going to draw something, which again, we'll worry about in a second. Maybe the background of the game is going to be red. So it's going to clear the screen to red. So now you can see, in order to start the game, I've got to call show game. And that's going to come in here. If I press the button in menu update, I want to show the game. So if I run now, press X to start. Oh, it's Z actually, sorry, I've got the wrong button on. It's gone to a red background screen, which as we know, is the color of our game. Okay, and I'm just going to change this because it's bugging me to Z. Press Z to start, okay? So that's how that's going to work. Now let's come into the game. The important thing about this show game function here is it's very much working as an init function for the um, game itself. So in this one, I'm going to set an X value to 63 and a Y to 63. And in here, I'm just going to say, if button naught, then X one. Okay, oh no, minus one, sorry. So in other words, um, I'm going to be moving something around the screen. So I'm just going to take this bit of code and paste it in for my four buttons. Okay, so if I press button one, which is to the right, I'm going to increment X. If I press button two, which is up, I'm going to decrease Y. And if I press button three, which is down, I'm going to increase Y. So this just gives me a very, a very simple movement around the screen, which means in here I can just do a circ fill and I can draw something at X, Y with a radius of three and a color of white. And so now hopefully when I run it and I press Z to start, you can see I can move my circle around the screen. Now let's say this is, um, I'm gonna make it a bit quicker as well. So here's my game, it's terrible, but it doesn't matter for the time being. If I run it, press Z to start, now I can move around. Let's make the game be that when I move off the screen, it gives me a game over scene. So I just need to check if x is less than naught, or x is greater than 127, or y is less than naught, or y is greater than 127, then... So what's this gonna do? Well, this is gonna show uh, a game over screen. So what are we gonna have there? Well, we're gonna have the same sort of thing. We're gonna have a new tab, which is gonna be for game over. We're gonna have a function, show game over. We're gonna have this as game over update and game over, put too many underscores there, game over draw, all right? And I just have to have a function, and it's this one, game over update, and also function game over draw. And in here, maybe, it'll just say CLS, and we're going to change it to some darker color, like dark blue. And it'll say print game over. And that can be printed at 10, 10 in white. And then underneath it, it'll say print press Z to restart. Okay, and this is going to take us back. We'll decide where in a second. And that will be um, at 10, 20 in red. Okay, we don't need those bits in there. So the game over function is going to set the update to game over update and the draw to game over draw. So in here, how do we show that we've gone wrong or we've gone off the screen and the game is over? We just call show game over. So if I run, so I press Z, I can move around the screen. When I go off the screen, I'm going to get game over. So here we go, game over. Press Z to restart, it says. So I've got to think to myself, okay, press Z to restart. 
well it's not going to take much to guess that in here in the update function of game over I need to be checking for my button and if I press Z button 4 I need to go somewhere now your mileage may vary on this you might want an instant restart you might want to go back to the menu I'm going to instantly restart so I'm just going to go show game okay so I've written show game here and that's going to take me straight back to this now what's important you'll see is that in show game the X and the Y are reset so even though I moved off the edge of the screen if we watch and I run it again I'm in my menu start the game move around off the screen game over press Z to restart there's my circle back in the middle and I'm off the screen game over Z to restart back to the middle so this is a really nice way of using these tabs to separate out our menu the main game game over itself and any other parts that you might want I often have a splash screen on my games and so I would also have another one for splash a show splash where I would set the update and the draw to show splash update and splash draw and have the code in here and what's quite nice is it means that within the game function here or the game tab sorry I've got my function for initializing the game which I can call any time and it reinitializes the game I've got the update functions here and then underneath I tend to put in other functions that might be useful so there might be a function called move player for example okay and that might be all of this stuff and that might go into there like that for example and then in my game update I would just call move player all right and this is a way of saying well these functions down here all belong to the game and it keeps everything in a nice place and it makes it really really easy to know what state your game is in and to program your game logically to keep everything nicely settled so you declare game as a table you give it two functions that it's going to always call in the update and the draw and then you populate those functions in these little show game function or show game over function or show menu function here so it's a very simple method but very very effective happy programming